Hey, what's up, everybody? It's El hey, Yon Geeks. Caught Luke in the middle of a yawn. Yay. Yep. <laughs> I was waiting for record, and then I was like, all right, I can't hold it anymore. <laughs> I, um, I hit record, and because, you know, we record to an external hard drive when we do things over uh, Discord, um, it has to, like, fire up. And so I sat there, hit record, and then I heard the thing just go, <laughs> and, like, it rattled my whole desk. Like, oh, god damn. <laughs> For that jet engine startup. <laughs> yeah, like, I don't know if my microphone caught it or not, but, like, I definitely felt the uh, vibration of the drive spinning up throughout the entire desk. I'm like, Jesus <laughs> Christ. Um, it's pretty pretty extreme there. Um, it's like when my car starts up now. And you get a, this long, just... It's like, <laughs> I'm going to do my best. <laughs> It's like, oh, god damn it, fine. It's like when your car starts up, it basically sounds like, um, oh my god, Futurama, it's right there in the tip of my tongue. Richard Nixon, whenever he talks, <laughs> <laughs> uh, <coughs> so how are we doing today, guys? Um, we're, like we said, uh, well. yeah, we're doing this over Discord, um, for whatever reason, we just, it's like early as hell uh, on Saturday morning. We don't feel like, you know, getting dressed. Luke yeah. just got off work like an hour and a half ago. I'm up like three hours earlier than I normally would be. So, yeah. Um, we're doing it over Discord. That way we don't have to wear pants. Yeah, no, pants. Um, pants are the devil, you know, kind of like foosball. Foosball's the devil. Foosball's, foosball's not the devil. I like it. You know what? Vicky Valancourt showed me her boobies, and I like them too. <laughs> and them alligators is on her because that Abdullah Amlangada. <laughs> oh, man. Back uh, when Adam Sandler was still good. <laughs> apparently, he just put out a movie uh, called, I think, Uncut Gems or something, Gemstones. Yeah. I think it's Uncut Gems. Apparently, it's really good. Like, it's not a, it's not a comedy. Uh, my understanding. It also I, um, has the. I, I think it's reviews. number seven on the list of movies that use the word fuck for the number of times it uses the word fuck. Oh, jeez. Yeah. Yeah, I gotta check that out. <laughs> <But> yeah, apparently, <laughs> it's like a legitimately good movie, and I was like, oh wow, all right, he still has it in him. I mean, which maybe. I think it's it's more not caring that that causes him to like. Yeah. Put out a bunch of shit. Probably. He, he even admitted he, he was filming movies because it let him and his friends go take a vacation. And, you know, his name will just draw people, so it'll make money either way. Yeah, it makes money overseas and stuff. Um, no matter what. Okay. So, let's go ahead and dive into a, a bunch of news of the stupids that we've got today. Because we haven't done yeah. that in a while. Because we did two episodes last month and nothing else. Um, <laughs> the Department of Transportation in New York today said uh, that the software for their parking meters had an established end date of January 1st, 2020 and was never updated by the vendor. For what that means is no parking meters around the New York City area uh, are accepting credit cards and prepaid parking cards. Um, <laughs> Which I'm sure doesn't isn't hurting anybody whatsoever. Yeah, uh, you know. The biggest metropolitan area in the world, if I'm not mistaken. Definitely, definitely up there. Um, they've uh, God, that's there's fourteen thousand meters in the city uh, that are affected by this little software bug that the vendor never did anything with. Um, yeah. they have repaired seventeen hundred of those. Jesus, that's a lot of meters. That is a lot that's of meters. It's it's the Y two K bug is finally hitting twenty years later. <laughs> like you got to sit there and, and think meters. about like the vendor who put in a fucking time bomb on their parking meter software. Like, well, I'm sure he's like, it'll never get to 2020. We'll all be dead by then. <laughs> oh no! You know, it reminds me of like the people who sit there or like and are like like independent contractor or like just kind of freelance software developers who sit there and like throw in, you know, bugs into the software that pop up at random times that only they can fix. Yes. 
just to make sure they continue to have a revenue stream. It's like, oh, that's yep. that's pretty shitty. <laughs> I had a friend of mine who said he did that with a software he made. Every couple months, it would pop up a, an error message that wouldn't go away until they called him in. He'd stay and do two, you know, five seconds of work in like two hours or whatever. Uh, they pay for him for this, you know, whatever the upkeep on the software. He'd keep going. <laughs> It's brilliant, but scummy. So you know. Yeah. Um, the the company uh, he had worked for is just a regular employee, and then they, you know, found out he did software and uh, contracted quote unquote him to do this on the side, and then basically uh, ball busted him into paying him pennies for his development of this program so i they got their just desserts for it to be completely honest yeah no i i i completely feel them on that yeah it was it, it was a pretty shitty company and I, I actually asked him one time i was like because he's gotten now into other fields and stuff and it was a few years ago i think i asked him i was like whatever happened to that he's like i don't know i stopped checking in with them <laughs> they, they stopped answering their calls <laughs> so I just stuck that's that's I amazing. Like ah, that's good. Yep, I I support this. Mm-hmm. <coughs> uh, but yes. uh, there's another company that's currently going through a Y2K twenty bug, and that's uh, WWE. With their uh-huh. fucking twenty two K twenty game won't work. Or yeah, WWE two K twenty does not work in twenty twenty. Twenty twenty. Uh, you know, the year it's a that really, the game really bad, bu- a bad uh, issue. It's not been fixed. Yeah, like the uh, game a few a... days ago. Anyway, the game apparently crashes as soon as you start it up. It's like, but the game is called 2K20. It's called WWE 2K20. It is the 2020 edition of the game series. Why no work in 2020? It's, it's already been such a clusterfuck of a terrible game that when I heard that news, my first response wasn't, Oh my God, I can't believe they did that. It was, wow. I'm surprised anyone decided they wanted to try and play it. (laughs) Yeah. But yeah, yeah. it's, it's an issue of, uh, like somebody said, part of it is, um, Vince McMahon apparently has this thing where he's tried uh, throughout its life to make WWE like on the same level as the NFL and you know NBA and MLB yeah. and stuff like that yeah. to the point where he's demanded a new released game every year because Madden gets a game every year. Whether or not it's possible or the game will turn out good or even remotely decent, he doesn't care. The game yeah. has to come out every year. Yeah. Oh my god, dude. Vince McMahon is something else. And I need him oh, to understand. Oh yeah. But I need him to understand that his soap opera for rednecks will never be on the same level as actual um <laughs> you know, sports. And I'm not it is not sports entertainment. <laughs> yeah. And like I'm not gonna sit there and say that, that the WWE doesn't have its sports like, you know, aspects because of course it does you know some of that danger is very real some of that does require actual physical dexterity and blah 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 but like it's it's soap opera for rednecks that's what it is i mean they beat the hell out of themselves and they get nothing for that's and pay their own travel and all the other terrible shit that he puts them through it's unfortunate it's uh it's i'm happy for the ones who are able to like get out of that and get into movies and stuff like that so they don't have to deal with that bullshit yeah you know, but Jesus fucking Christ, man. It is such a terrible everything. <laughs> I yeah. just, I don't know, man. I, I would never. Yeah. Anyway, let's move on. Um, Ever since the Attitude Era ended, I can't watch it no more. <laughs> <laughs> I, I just lost interest over time, man. Like, I admit that I used to be like a fan of that shit and I'd watch it, you know, religiously weekly every time. And I don't know, man. I mean, there's nothing nothing wrong with it. It it is a drama, which is a big part of the draw. Um, I mean, you it you lose that. Oh, it's a real match, blah blah blah. But it doesn't that doesn't really matter. No, it's it's about the drama, and a lot of the stuff is the backstage and the all that 
put on stuff is the interesting stuff. It's just, I mean, it's just another form of entertainment. It's just shitty that uh, the owner who, the, even the way he became and took over everything was shady, undercutting other wrestling uh, organizations, poaching their wrestlers and stuff. Mm-hmm. But, mm-hmm. yeah. Um, so here's something that was happening last month in Vegas that made me giggle. Someone was putting tiny cowboy hats on pigeons. <laughs> Nobody knows why. <laughs> Those images were adorable too. It's like, uh, someone in Las Vegas has been putting tiny cowboy hats on the heads of Las Vegas pigeons. And while you might be asking yourself why one local onlooker has only one explanation, the rodeo is in town. But according to uh, K- KVVW, um, which was a local Fox affiliate, I believe, uh, yeah, someone was putting uh, just little cowboy hats on pigeons, and it's just I, dumb. I feel bad for the motherfuckers who have to go around and try and like catch these pigeons to get the hats off <laughs> a little bit. Except if I was there, I wouldn't not. I, I wouldn't be able to keep myself from fucking laughing hysterically at the dude chasing pigeons with a fucking net like get over here you little shit i gotta get the hat off you. <laughs> um you a local fuck. a local animal rescue and pigeon advocacy group which i didn't know was a thing you know because oh, pigeons are basically sky rats um known as Leave lofty hopes alone. have Leave serious concerns about the negative impacts the hats will have on the pigeons it's like why like like i mean pigeon i don't know I assume I have to assume pigeons are pretty fucking dumb. So <laughs> I wonder if they even fucking noticed. I mean, you know, pigeons pigeons are really stupid. Like in New York, you know, they won't get out, they won't get out of your way if you're walking yeah. towards them. Like I experienced that firsthand when I was there. Um you, you literally have to physically come in contact with them to get them to move out of your fucking way. So I don't know. Um so, yeah, pigeons in New York, at least, are pretty stupid. Like, here in Cincinnati, they will run away from you unless you're throwing food at them, so. Yeah, we've got a lot less of them in, in bigger cities, New York, and places. They they're, they're basically know that, that you can't fucking do anything to them. Yeah. They don't give a shit. They don't. They don't care. Fuck you, buddy. Um, <laughs> you got food? I'm but, not going to lie. There was an Animaniacs cartoon or part of the Animaniacs cartoon where there were pigeons, but they were like mobsters. Yeah, yeah, no. That shit was funny. The, uh, oh my god, the Good Brothers? Or the God, Good Feathers? The, the Good, good feathers. feathers, yes. Yep. Oh, that's what it was. Good shit, man. Are you talking to me? <laughs> <laughs> Are you talking to me? Uh, th- that, I what do, do you remember. think I'm funny? They had a Joe Pesci pigeon. Oh, it was fucking great. Yep. Uh huh. <laughs> Now, uh, now we're all gonna go back and watch all of those clips. Yeah, I'm gonna fucking. What happened to the? Wasn't Animaniacs getting re-picked up on Netflix or Hulu or something recently? I don't know. Uh, maybe. Ah, uh, fuck. I think that was something that was happening. I have to look that up. I'm not gonna get Hulu. At least I don't think I will. But yeah, I mean, you, I I had it for like a year at a dollar a month. And I did not, I did not, uh, keep it. (laughs) A reboot of the series was announced by Hulu in January 2018 with two seasons to be produced in conjunction with Amblin Entertainment and Warner Brothers Animation. Expect to air starting in this year. Oh, okay, cool. So, yeah. On what, what was it on? Hulu, like you said. Hulu. Okay. That's, that's so weird because WB, (laughs) I mean, they must have made the deal beforehand because WB has their own fucking app. Yeah. I don't the, know. What is it? It's just all under the HBO app, isn't it? Uh, I think that's what it's going to end up being. Yeah, HBO. Yeah, Max. Right now, there is a separate. Yeah, right now there is a DC Universe app. Yeah. Or or WB app. I can't remember that has the DC stuff. That's going to get folded into it. I think DC Universe. Yeah. Yeah. I kind of want that still. It's got a lot of uh, cool shit on it. I just fucking don't watch much shit except for like the Mandalorian and Witcher lately. <laughs> yeah. Like I don't, I don't want like that. That was my thing with Hulu. Like despite the fact that it was so cheap, I like 
I just didn't watch it enough. Like, I think I watched uh, maybe a handful of episodes of Archer, and there was something else on there that I was watching, but I can't remember what it was, so I, I, just, <laughs> I just stopped. Once my dollar a month uh, was up, because it was for a year, I was like, all right, I don't need you anymore. Cancel. Yeah. The only thing I still pay for um, is uh, HBO, because when HBO turns into HBO Max, I, wa- I want that, because of all the shit you're getting underneath it. Because mm-hmm. you're getting all the Warner Brothers properties, too, right? Yep. So between yeah, basically between crazy. Disney, Netflix, and HBO, I will have all the things. And I'm like, all right. <laughs> but anyway, moving on. More news is stupid because yeah. we've got more to do. Um, a noodle shop owner in China is arrested after putting opium in his noodles so customers get addicted. God. A I noodle swear shop you on- hear, you but, hear this kind of story come out every once in a while. <laughs> yeah. I think somebody's like, how can I... Oh, I know what I'll do. Drugs. Yes, drugs. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I got, a noodle shop owner was arrested after putting opium as an ingredient in his noodles so that his customers will keep coming back for more. However, his cover was blown when a customer who ate at his place is a positive for morphine during the police drug inspection, which is awfully ah. nice. You know, police just randomly drug testing you. Um, yeah. Police the, state. Yeah. The customer maintained his innocence when the results of the drug test came out and stressed that he never took any drugs. When questioned further, he just said that he ate some snail noodles at the store. Feeling suspicious, the police force then went over to the store to check if they were using any contraband. The police managed to seize a bag of snail powder, powder, which tested positive for morphine. What's this powder? Oh, that's just snail powder. (laughs) It's, uh, snail powder. Yeah, not, not, not... No drugs here. <laughs> no drugs here. It's not opium. Nope. After that, they closed off the store and found about 76 grams of poppy seed powder. Which is... Nice. Yeah. Um, that dude... <laughs> during... The, <laughs> he was arrested. They shut the noodle, the shop down. And uh, during the questioning, he admitted to using the drugs to improve his business. <laughs> his idea was, you know, opium's addictive. Put them in my noodles. Make people addictive to them. Boom. More people come buy my noodles. Yeah, people keep coming back. (laughs) Uh, He said that the powder that he used was grown by him in his hometown about four years ago. Nice. Yeah. So that's that's actually four um, years. He's been planning it out for four years. Yeah. Right. Like that's 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 fucked up. (laughs) Like I ain't mad at the guy really, uh, but you know. It, it it's it's shitty that he's sitting there getting people addicted to uh, opium to keep his business yes. going. To get his, he's got the best noodles in town. Oh my god, they're um, so amazing! Go go eat like seventy bottles of or bowls of them rather. I don't know why I said bottles. Give me. I I saw it's it's been a while, but there was a documentary on like Chinese street food, mm-hmm. and one of the pro and you know there's a lot of great and amazing street food, but one of the problems they have is. I can't remember what they called it as, but the grease, where they get their grease from, yeah. is they're literally skimming um, the sewer for grease. Oh, to ew. save money on grease and oh. reuse. It. Yeah, like they had a ser- They had for a while. There are serious issues of people were getting um, fucking whatever you get from being exposed to feces, uh, the bacteria and stuff, infections, and you know other horrible things and then they you know started going and finding out these shops were literally like going behind their stalls and just dredging down manholes for grease jesus Christ. absolutely disgusting and that, at that point i was like nope never mind because they sh- the food looks absolutely amazing and i've watched other people go and like there's a street, uh, i can't remember the youtuber but there's a big channel where he goes and eats street food in different countries and stuff and yeah. i my my absolute one of my favorite foods is dumplings and they're eating he's eating dumplings from all these places and then i see this and i'm like well that just ruined it for me yeah <laughs> i never want to eat dumplings again eh, but i still do mm. dumplings are amazing yeah, right. I mean, at least here we got some standards, so you can you can almost yeah. be sort of, kind of assured that they're not going into the sewer to get grease. So it's it's fine. God, 
yeah, it was it was disgusting. It's but I mean, it, they know it. Then they're actually the reason they know about it, or that it's well known, is because they actually are cracking down and closing those places. So right, right. It's probably not something you have to worry about. But at the same time, I was holy shit. Yeah, that's that's um, yeah. yeah, that's awful. Uh, uh, all right, so I got a couple more stories here. Um, yeah. An ad stating alcohol is a drug was blocked for being too political. Um, that's actually happened in Ireland, so I, I yeah, guess it makes sense. makes sense. But yeah, um, the Tomar Trust said they were told by a media agency that their drink is a drug campaign earmarked for two high-profile billboards on a road in Dublin was too political. The campaign to warn parents that alcohol consumption during teenage years causes lifelong brain damage has previously run in prints and outdoors. The Cork-based trust, which has been helping to fund education, community health, and sports projects for young people for over two decades, said they have previously encountered opposition to their anti-drink campaign from some advertising and media agencies. So basically, um, Ireland is like, you, you're not taking your drink, our drink away from us. No, it's not. It's it's not a drug. It's a drink. It's not. It's not. The, <laughs> never it's, hurts you. <laughs> it never hurts you. I mean, you know, drinking is. It's, it's like it's Ireland. Drinking is a way of life for them. Like that. <laughs> drinking. Drinking is a job for them, right? Like, like it, it, it's so ingrained into their society that if you're not drinking, you're considered a weird one. <laughs> like everyone's an alcoholic by the time they're six, right? Like, come on. Uh. Well, there's a reason. Uh. What is it called? Whiskey is uh, just like something of the vine. I can't remember the, what it's called. Yeah. I don't know what you're talking about, unfortunately. <laughs> ah. All it's right. basically. It's, it's, it's just normal. Yeah. Um, it's like Russia. The, Russia only a few years ago declared that uh, like beer is not a soft drink. Yeah, right. Like... <laughs> Like you could go to a McDonald's and get it with your Happy Meal. <laughs> yeah, here you go, little Timmy. This will shut you the fuck up. Shut up, you little bastard. Um. <laughs> anyway, uh, this is the last one I'm gonna cover. It's a really short little f- funny thing. Um, but if apparently, as of I don't know, a past couple of days. The Hasbro toy company now officially owns Death Row Records, <laughs> which is a, it's just hilarious to me. But um, apparently, the Hasbro announced that they were buying a company called Entertainment One, which is mm. kind of like an umbrella corporation for a lot of things. And they own Death Row Records, <laughs> so Row. so yeah, Hasbro, the toy company who made like Mr. Potato Head, <laughs> and now, My Little Pony, and My Little Pony. And tons of other really strange and weird toy properties now owns Including Death Including things Row. like Transformers, G.I. Joe. Uh, basically, like, if it wasn't Ninja Turtles, they own t- Yeah, yeah. Um, and I believe they also have the rights to a lot of toys for various other properties. Um, if it's an action figure sold at a Target or a Walmart or a Toys R Us, chances are it was made by Hasbro. Um, yeah, they make a lot. They make the Marvel figures. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think they used to make the Star Wars figures. I know Kenner did for a long time, but I think Kenner went out of business. Um, um, yeah, they. There's... Yeah, <laughs> it's hilarious. Uh, Mr. Potato Head might show up on a Death Row. Death Row Records, Mr. Yeah. Potato Head. He's going to drop a single. Yep, a fire ass yeah. mixtape. <laughs> <laughs> a French fry mixtape. Hell yeah, dude. Uh, but call it call it twice baked. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's a double entendre. I love it. <laughs> Here's an interesting little tidbit, um, kind of related to what we talk about. Uh, in 2019, Pokemon Go was number six on a top ten list of games that made revenue, like like revenue amounts. Um, they made one point four billion dollars last year. Um, which is these games altogether? No, Pokemon Go. 
Pokemon, Pokemon Go, Go oh, Jesus. made $1.4 billion in revenue. Um, yeah. For comparison, the top game on this list is Fortnite. Of course it is. Um, mm. They only made $1.8 billion in revenue. Oh, I'm surprised that uh, GTA V isn't up there as well. Although that didn't that's, just that, come out. Here. That's also not a free-to-play game. Oh, I didn't hear that part. Yeah. Um, you have to, you still have to pay the entrance fee for that. Yeah. It's currently <laughs> coming to, um, if you haven't played it, but you have, uh, Xbox Game Pass, it's coming to Game Pass soon. Yeah. Like this month. Yeah, that's, uh, yeah, that's, that's, I saw that. I was like, oh, that's pretty cool. I don't care because I already have the game, but you know, whatever. Yeah. Ugh. Pardon me. But yeah, um, I thought that was a little interesting tidbit, um, <laughs> That Pokemon Go, despite being as old and buggy as it is, is still competing with with games like Fortnite. Um, all right. Well, I mean, it's uh, Pokemon. I mean, I don't know. I think it is. Isn't it like the most profitable single property? Or one of? Pokemon. It's got to be up there with Star Wars and Marvel and everything yeah, else. Yeah, Pokemon is the most valuable uh, media franchise on the planet with like... Ninety-six billion dollars in revenue, Jesus God. versus or That's just... versus like I don't know. Uh, I think the next one's like in the eighties or seventies. I don't remember the exact numbers now, but yeah, um, Pokemon is yeah. It 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 completely dwarfs um, all the other little media franchises like that. There was, uh, I was watching a video, and I don't even remember what it was on, but part of the thing they were talking about was uh, a YouTuber who's getting fucked over right now because of the the family, like if you're, you know, a video for children or family friendly, all that kind of crap. Yeah. And this guy, what he's done with his channel for years is open up, I, I guess, open Pokemon cards, and he just talks about Pokemon cards and the trading card game and all this stuff. Yeah. Um, and his, he's fucked. Because he's getting listed as for, you know, kids, which means he's not showing up on anything. He can't get ads anymore. Yeah. Um, he's basically getting screwed over because he makes content that could be viewed by children. Which sucks for him. But part of the thing was the uh, the, the people who were talking about it, they were surprised that, like, Pokemon cards were still a thing. And I was thinking, like, oh, my God. Like, you know, I mean, we work retail, but Pokemon cards have still been in stores. And how long back? That's... 20 years i can still remember <laughs> when it first started kicking off back in the day like the cards got popular and i think the game was either right before the cards or right after and that was like and, and it, every single kid i knew had cards and then when obviously when the games came out everybody had a game boy with pokemon red or blue <laughs> that it's just it yep. is a fucking monster of a property and yeah. yet they still can't make a fucking game that looks like it came out this goddamn generation. <laughs> mm. Mm -hmm. uh, $60 billion or fucking whatever it is. <laughs> it's asshole. Yeah. Yeah. Um, hey, I mean, it's why Nintendo will never go away. And it's probably part of the reason why Nintendo can do what they want and experiment and release things like the Wii U without worrying about, you know, a, a, a huge backlash. Yeah. Which is pretty cool. Yep, it is Pokemon with an estimated total revenue of $95 billion. Um, Hello Kitty <laughs> is actually second with $86 billion. Really? Yeah. Um, Winnie the Pooh is third with $76 billion. And then Mickey I Mouse... Don't... <laughs> I don't get it. Go ahead. Um, Mickey Mouse and Friends, seventy-four billion. Star Wars is sixty-eight billion. Um, wow, Mickey Mouse has beat Star Wars. Yeah, and I mean, I guess your Mickey Mouse would get all of the theme park revenue. Mm -hmm. So it, and they probably just bundle in all of Disney's car, like the the Chan Disney Channel stuff under that. So that um, makes sense. I guess. Something called An Pan Man, which is a Japanese superhero thing. Has uh, sixty billion. The reason I was laughing um, when you said Winnie the Pooh because I was just about to say, oh, I guess that makes sense. Of uh, because Hello Kitty is popular overseas, 
I know in Japan and probably places like China. And then, of course, the third thing he brought up was Winnie the Pooh. <laughs> <laughs> hey, he's popular in China, too. Um, <laughs> and then uh, rounding out the top ten, because I'm not going to go much further than that. Um, Disney yeah. Princess, which is uh -huh. $46 billion. Jump Comics, i.e. Shonen Jump, $40 billion. Mario is at $36 billion, And then the MCU is at $35 billion. Um, so Disney owns three. And Disney owns five of those. F oh, oh god. Five oh, yeah, of the Mickey. top ten they own. They own MCU, obviously. They own the Disney Princess yeah. shit. They own Star Wars. They own Mickey Mouse and the Friends. And they own Winnie the Pooh. Yeah, five of the top ten highest grossing properties. Nintendo owns two. Mm -hmm. um, well, I mean, last year, um, Disney made... Uh, I, I had the number. Hold on. Uh, with their movies made i mean they made the most obviously they made oh um 50 50 percent of the total gross uh at, at least i i think this the number might be from the united states specifically mm -hmm. but like uh, 50 percent for just them disney oh 40 percent represented 40 percent of the entire box office yeah um they 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 made something like eighty percent of the movies and the total box office of revenue they they got like forty percent of because they made either directly or indirectly almost all of the top movies from the last year. Yeah, six uh movies made over a billion dollars. Mm -hmm. Um, and Rise of the Skywalker I think just just missed it. Uh, and I mean, <coughs> it came out a fucking weeks before the end of the year. Um. And, the, and I, I saw something where somebody was saying they're not going to do as well next year. I Bullshit. I think Disney's probably going to have just as much. They might not have as many mil, um, billion dollar movies, but as far as movies go, I think they'll probably make even more of the box office because next year they're going to they, – they will own even more of the movies that are released. Mm-hmm. Yep. You know they are. Like – Yeah. This is this is what they mean when uh, they say monopoly. Like Disney, in like ten years, the only thing we're gonna have is Disney. <laughs> Disney yeah, will we'll, consume everything. The great wars between Disney and Google, <laughs> and Facebook. Google and Facebook will have all of our data, and Disney will yeah. have all of our entertainment. <laughs> At some point, you know, Google and Facebook will merge into like. Face Google or Google Book or some shit like that. So we'll have Jeez. Google Book and fucking Disney, that's, and that's it. That, I really now, I, I am, I, it, it is in my head. I want to like plan out or do like uh, a, a, a cyberpunk, a future cyberpunk world where, um, similar to cyberpunk and similar to other things in that genre where the corporations basically own everything. I want to do it where like the only corporations around are like Google, Apple, Disney, um, like, you know, pick a Pepsi, Coke, like those are the only corporations <laughs> and they control everything and literally control pieces of the world or pieces of countries and are basically at war with each other. <laughs> well, that, that, that's amazing. Like, I mean, Pepsi, PepsiCo owns a shitload of companies, right? Uh, yeah, they, them, uh, them and Coke. I mean, it's like like between – there's like six companies that sell every single product on any shelf in any store, right? So it's like yeah, – you got like – Yeah, you basically have P&G, Nestle, Nestle uh, PepsiCo, Coca-Cola Company, um, like Glasgow Smith Klein, I think the pharmaceutical company, and then there's like one more, and like those yeah. those all own like all the fucking brands from medicine to dog food to like uh like laundry detergent and shit like that. Like they own all of that. So like if you don't want to support a company, it's going to be really have to really try hard. Really fucking hard. <laughs> yes, like make your own soap. Like, <laughs> yeah. I don't Which know. Which is apparently a thing that's come back and people are doing. <laughs> I had no idea until I had somebody buying all of, like the, the different ingredients for soap. And I was like, oh, oh shit. All right. I didn't know people did this. Yeah. Apparently it's a thing. Um, 
I don't know, man. It's just, it's just that's how it works, you know. <laughs> <coughs> All right. So we have a main topic for today, right? Oh yeah. It's The Witcher on Netflix. Dun dun dun. Yeah. So I finally was able to binge the rest of that series. Um, I've watched it. Get caught up. Twice. Well, I've not watched it fully, but I've watched it twice now. Basically, like I don't know, a time and two thirds or whatever. Um, the show is is pretty pretty fantastic. I I I at least I absolutely enjoy it. Um, but I, I'm gonna need more people to sit there and uh, understand that it's not based on the games. So when you watch it. If you're just one of the people that have only played the games, um, stop. Just just stop comparing it to the two. It, it's it's one of those things that's really annoying. And when I sit there and I see people complaining about, eh, well, the game did it this way. Well, yes, because the game's a different fucking story. So just yeah. stop. I mean, it's it's a it, even if it was based loosely on the games, it's a different. Fuck, it's like a fucking movie based on a book. It's yeah. going to be different. Shut yeah. the fuck up. You can compare it, and I'm going to compare it somewhat to the games. Uh, but honestly, I I didn't see it being that different. There are obviously story beats that are different. But, like... Well, I, yeah, I, um, that's because read, the games and the, the movies are both based on the same source material. And, like, the... The, the, the game... They're, the yeah, they're based on the book. Yeah, and the... Te- well, the books. And, um, yes. Because there sorry. are several books. And, like, the TV show basically explores um, the first book, which was just a series of short stories thrown together. And I was um, going to say, that's that's one of the reasons that the show is – and when you watch it for a few episodes, it's – it's it, there's almost – you can follow it, but at the same time, it's completely disjointed because that's exactly what it's supposed to be. Mm-hmm. And then it does start to make more sense timeline-wise – when you get towards the ending. Yeah. Um, but it's still, it's, it's entertaining enough that when you look at it as, Oh, okay. These are in a way, separate things happening to the same characters. Yeah. It's much, it's much easier to like, Oh, okay. Now I get it. Now I can watch it and stop thinking about, but wait, how does that? And where is this link up? And yeah. Yada, yada. Yeah. Like, like On for me, of- um, it wasn't necessarily difficult to follow. Um, but it didn't yeah. click for me that the timeline was jumping all over the place until I got to the very last episode and Geralt and Siri meet and I go, oh, they were leading up to this. And it, it was like, oh, OK, all right, I, I got you. They were telling all that story, all that exposition to catch you up to the present time. The present time is Geralt and Siri meeting on the little farm. Or yeah. Whatever. Which my my thing was, I, I, obviously, I know they're going to eventually get to that point. And like after like the third or it was more like the fifth episode. I'm like, OK, I want them to meet now. <laughs> I was getting really goddamn frustrated in those last two episodes. I'm sitting there going, OK, motherfucker. Because <laughs> it's like it's like a series of unfortunate events kept them apart <laughs> like they were right there and i'm just mad because they're right oh. there but but i mean it was it was still amazing the thing that like it wasn't the siri Geralt thing the switch between Geralt and um yennefer that was throwing me off because i had like i was trying to figure out where they were like kind of in relation to each other and the yennefer stuff was like I had no fucking idea what was going on Yeah. because that she in her, in her character does that. That's kind of the way she is for a while is going back and forth and changing her mind and getting, you know, she's angry at one thing. So she leaves and does something. And that was the most confusing thing for me until towards the end when it was finally like, Oh, will you quit your job? And you know, you abandon everybody. And I'm like, Oh, okay. Now I got it. Yeah. Yeah. That was the one thing like, like that was the one question I had with the show was the first, the episode where she's, um, she is finishing essentially with mage training or witch training, whatever it's called. Yeah. And well, she, she's, yeah, she's becoming a mage. 
Um, yeah. Yeah. Where she's she's uh, going to go to whatever. I can't remember the name of the country. Aridin. Um, Trostland. Aridin, yeah. She's going to go there. <laughs> Not <she> Trostland. <laughs> this isn't I, Destiny. I, I know that's a country. Oh, okay. <laughs> so This isn't Destiny, buddy. <laughs> yeah. So she's going there, and then her and the dude she was seeing on the side, like, had this whole plan and stuff, and then he fucks her over, and she's gets – and they make it, oh, well, we can't send her there. They don't like elves, and she's technically a half-elf or a quarter-elf. Well, so instead they decide they're going to send her to – well, I mean, that um, was just the uh, that was just the that that one dude, uh, the wizard, whose name escapes me right now, just being an asshole essentially. Um, well, him, the other, the black wizard whose niece did he didn't want to send a guard. Yeah, they. Fringillo. They there's obviously like some shit going on, some like conspiracy shit with them. They're doing this stuff on purpose for yeah. a reason. They're yeah. they're assholes, right? So then he had his kid. You know, he get that information from her. Meanwhile, she was spying on him and reveals it to him. And I didn't get how that hurt him in any way whatsoever, but it did. And she's like, ha ha, I got one over on you and leaves. The thing I didn't understand is so she's very pissed. She's going to Nilfgaard instead. Right. So then she decides, fuck it. I'm going to get myself made up. So she goes and has the whole procedure done where she's turned into the Yennefer, more the Yennefer we know, the absolutely stunningly gorgeous um, black-haired chick. Yeah. And then she goes and basically woos the crowd and dances with the king of Nilfgaard. No, 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 that's the king of Airden. That was the king of Airden. Okay. That was the king of Airden. Now but, I get it. Yeah, remember, that's Fringilla... Because I, I thought she just went in and said, fuck it. No, 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 no. took over. Um, she was promised her homeland, Got which it. is Airden. Um, she's from yeah. Vanderburg. Vanderburg's a township in Airden. She was promised Airden. She, she was fucked over. It was taken from her. So she said, fuck it, did her glow up, and went and took Basically. Airden from uh, from Fringilla, who was supposed to be sent to Nilfgaard originally. So yeah, and then got sent to Nilfgaard. Okay, so that that makes sense. What then later on didn't make as much sense is the fact that those guys were then backing Fringilla in Nilfgaard when before they had been very obviously not wanting to back Nilfgaard. That's because Fringilla went. I I don't remember the exact progression now because I'll have to rewatch yeah. it, which is what I'm doing anyway. Um, but yeah, at some point. Because she abandoned her station when she was being chased by the assassin or whatever. Um, yeah, well, yeah, Fringilla, she was fed up with it anyway. Yeah, yeah. Fringilla got you know sent there anyway or whatever. <laughs> um, actually, it could have been that Fringilla got sent there to begin with because Aridin, you know, the king of Aridin, whatever the fuck his name was. I believe that was the case. She yeah. got sent to Nilfgaard because uh, it, it, because uh, uh, Yennefer went and was like, hey, I'm hotter than her. And the dude's like, yep. You sure are. I'm taking you. <laughs> um, yeah. And, I uh, want this one. Yes. <laughs> Basically, yes. Um, so, yeah, like, like she did that, and Frangilla ended up being, like, an amazing, I don't know, uh, advisor or whatever, which is what, something, which was what the original uh, thing was. They weren't sure that she would do well, because according to Wizard uh, Aragabor, or whatever the name is, she she's really good at being doing what she's told, not necessarily thinking on well, her own. I think I think that's in, essentially what she did because Nilfgaard had the uprising. Yeah, and then she ended up just placating the person who took over, yeah. who was this super religious zealot, and she's now a super religious zealot. Yeah, so. I think it's it was like the worst possible thing, and that's why I don't get why the her well I get why her uncle is for because his family so he's he's not he's you know he's going to be anyway the other wizard later on when he's they were backing Nilfgaard and part of it is because I know what happens at least what happens in the game I'm assuming is assuming is loosely based on the fact that eventually they don't take a liking to mages at all and start wiping them out. So I'm kind of like, that's why I was wondering, like, you guys are fucking stupid. Because <laughs> <laughs> this shit's going to go bad, man. Yeah. It's about to break bad. Yeah. But yeah, um, either way, I guess that's their comeuppance. Something like that. Yeah, basically that's what happens. So, yeah. Um, I mean, 
Ugh. This show a, it, otherwise, good. that was the one thing that did confuse me, and now I realize, oh, it's because I fucking I missed that part of it where they she didn't go to Nilfgaard. She went to where she wanted to go. It's, yeah, that that I missed that. I I didn't. But now now it it makes more sense. Um, and either way, I, like I said, the show is fucking phenomenal. Yeah. Like, I. I I personally don't think this girl is that much different than the one in the games. Yeah, the, like the From big difference heard, between the two is uh like you have more freedom to shape your girl in in yeah. in the games. So he can he can be more of a reflection of you whereas this this gun um he's just he's a little more gruff, he's a little more he's definitely wittier. Um he's definitely I mean that's how I did I mean Again, it's it's personal how you play the game, but that's always how I envision Geralt is a completely sarcastic, grizzled bastard who acts like he doesn't want to do the right thing, but then ends up constantly doing the right thing. <laughs> Only because he's forced to, though. Like he's one hundred percent reluctant in getting into yes. anything, and that's because that's what he was taught by Vesemir. You know, you you don't play the night. You don't, don't enforce the it. rules. You don't you don't get into this shit. You leave it alone. Yep. You stay away from it, and that's how we go but as at witchers. The same time, he 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 acts like he doesn't want to, and then if they even put him anywhere near it, he always will step in and do the right thing. Right. No matter what. Right. <laughs> even if even if that's not what he was pushed into in the first place. Basically, yes. Uh, although, I mean, granted, at the very beginning, the first thing he does isn't that. He he kills that um, uh, woman. I don't even remember if she was a mage or a witcher or what. No, but, but like, after that point, yeah. I mean, that's because he's forced into it, like we said. You know, he was forced into yes. it by, by her it men. it wasn't a good thing. It yeah. wasn't. He could have gone and fucked it. He could have, you know, probably killed that mage. Maybe not. Who knows? Uh, yeah. e- either way, it, it almost felt like that's why he ends up doing the right thing more often is the guilt from that. Right. Which like, is kind of something they put into the show. He, he kind of uh, a- a- alludes to it, especially when he's talking to the Elven King. Yeah. That straight up was like that could have been, for me, a moment straight out of the game where you have to make that or, or like a Mass Effect or any game where you if you have a high enough um a uh, good score or high enough diplomacy that you can fucking win that challenge instead of having to slaughter all the elves or something. Yeah. It was like an unlocked dialogue option. I was like, ah, I like it. I like it a lot. Yep. It's, it, it was pretty nice. Um, I, I liked that. Yeah. Uh, the only other thing that bothered me is uh, when he yelled, fucking um, Jas- uh, Jasker. Yes, dear. Just, yeah, Danny Lyon at the end of the series, and when he yells at him, I was like, no, I like that character. Stop it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's Geralt, it though. Me. Like, like he never wanted the bard to follow him around. No, not really. He, he was the bard his... just started following him like a lost puppy. That was hilarious. <laughs> it was great. It's... There's so many... There's quite a, a lot of comparisons between this and The Mandalorian. Geralt and the Mandalorian are very similar. Like they don't get involved. That's not my job. And then, God damn it! <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's it's a it's pretty. Like there there are definitely a lot of comparisons. Um, except the Mandalorian, you know, has Baby Yoda or whatever the child. It's a different. So it's a different coat. So like, he, well, yeah, but I mean, it's still pretty. Like you said, it's still pretty similar. Like he doesn't yeah. sit there and and purposely get involved in things, you know. Yeah, no, he's he's very reluctant, and, and he ends up with the child, similar to the way that I. I and that is one thing I want more. That bothers me the most about the series. It's my biggest complaint. I want I want Geralt and Siri. <laughs> and it ends before we get Geralt and Siri. Yeah. Because I want that's that's my that's equivalent to like uh, the Mandalorian and Baby Yoda to me. <laughs> yes, Geralt because you know in training Siri. Yeah, because you know the Mandalorian sits there and purposely takes on the child and like protects yeah. it and all that stuff. <laughs> Whereas it's considered a uh, a, a, a fucking well an orphan, but I can't remember. They they set a different term for it. Right, right. Of course, but I don't know. Um, 
Uh, I, I, I mean, personally like, don't take any real, like, flack with the series. Like, because like I said, I went into it no. um, expecting it to not be based on the game. I, ex- I expect it to maybe have some familiarity with the characters that are thrown in. Um, but I, I never expect it like, oh, it's going to suck. It's going to be terrible, blah, blah, blah. Like, no, like it's, it's just not going to be what I know. It's going to be a new experience for me. And it's like, that's really cool. And so I, I've definitely enjoyed the series. Um, yeah. The only thing, like the biggest difference for me, I mean, like we said, story-wise, it's different than the games. And obviously the game takes place way further in the future. Um, there's different stuff that you know is going to happen later on. But to me, the big, the, the, the only really one of the bigger character differences was, uh, um, Triss Triss? is a very, very different character, which she's very different in the books is my understanding too. I mean, yeah, she's, she's, like I said, this story follows the books and, um, she's, she's a much, she's not a huge character in the, in the books versus the game. Like she's, she's just a smaller character. And, um, I mean, a lot of people took issue with that. Like, why isn't she the sexy redhead? Her, der, der, be, because it's not the same story. Like, it, it's it's what not. What does she? Is she look more like she's supposed to look like in the books? Because um, I would prefer the redhead to be completely honest. I mean, I yes, she yes, she does. She 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 one she of the better, least interesting characters. She better fit. Well, like I said, she's a she's a very minor character, and that's what she ends up being in the show. Is that she's not mm-hmm. she's not nearly as important in in. In the in in the universe, um, in the books, as she is in the game, she doesn't really play a big part of it. Um, yeah, at least not in the uh, part that we're in right now, because we're still in the very we're in the le- we're in the very beginning where they're covering the short stories and sort of kind of discussing the origins. And in that part Which of the, yeah, she's just not important. Like I'm sorry, Triss fans, but she's a cunt who is manipulative in the books, and she's just not important right now. She's not. Get over it. Well, every mage is a cunt that's manipulative. Well, yes. but <laughs> proven um, by Yennefer time and time again in the first few episodes. But, like, to the level of... Like, Triss is worse. Um, because Triss takes advantage of Geralt in his amnesic state. Um, and when it comes to series freedom... Um, and the Lodge of Sorcerers is trying to like take her in and and turn her into a living weapon or whatever the fuck it is they're trying to do. Um, Yennefer is one hundred percent opposed to it and is fighting it. Where Triss is over there just you know silently uh, complacent and compliant and like you know yeah whatever let's just do this. So yeah. So when it comes down to you know fighting for series freedom, despite Yennefer being a very prominent member of the Lodge of Sorcerers, um, she's like, "No, wait, we can't do this." And yeah, they must start that after the I mean, Lodge, the current. Yeah, current, no, like like it, whatever it's, breaks it, down. It, it's pretty late. In, it, it's later into the series when Siri is yeah. more of an adult. Um, right now, she's just a child, so she's the young, the young little girl. Um, that that's later in the series from from what I've understood and what I've read, mm-hmm. and maybe I'm wrong. I don't know, but that's that's just what I've that's like second third hand second hand information or whatever because I still have never read the books. So. Yeah, and who knows if it they might go off track of the books and um, tell their own story later on. Anyway, maybe maybe not because there's a shitload of source material to work with, so I I doubt they'll that's they'll true. even need to do that. They they won't need to pull um a Game of Thrones. God, I hope not. Um, I mean, if they change it, fine, as long as it's good. I don't care if you do your own story. Just just have it be good. Have it make sense. <laughs> yes, make sense. Don't rush it. Like even if it <laughs> even if it doesn't make sense in the moment. Like wrap it all up at the end, like you did this time, like you did with this first season, and make it make sense. You know, like um, don't rush it all into one season. <laughs> Fucking bullshit, ten episodes. Don't throw all of your character don't, development away in the last few episodes. Yeah, basically, don't fuck it up. Um, <laughs> I'm so so angry about that, man. But. Uh, uh. I'm still subscribed to um, Tree Folk on Reddit, so I still see the fucking memes and stuff bashing them. 
<laughs> I love it. I mean, it's so terrible overall. I don't I don't know how they got away with that. Um You know, some of the complaints though that I've seen have been hilarious, like Tris not being, you know, this beautiful, sexy redhead. Um one of the weirder complaints I've seen though are that the dryads weren't naked green chicks. <laughs> You know, the dryads that they encounter yeah. in the Brooklyn Forest. There are people who are legitimately upset that they're not naked and green. I mean, that would, that would be my... Uh, and not necessarily naked, but a dryad to me would probably be... If not green, like the color... If it's fall, they would be orange and reddish and yada yada. Because I come from the like the D&D right, style right. thought of dryads. And the only, only, so, the only like argument I would have against your particular thing is that they are magical creatures and can probably just do whatever the fuck they want. Um, oh, yeah, and they're fucking completely connected to the forest. So, right. But at the same time, I don't have an argument because what does the source material say? It, right. You know, with what that says. If it right. says it that his interpretation of a dryad is that, then fine. There's lots of fantasy stuff where uh, like I like when they're like, yeah, that is the fairy tale side of it but this is the actual truth yeah it's like you know when, what i'm saying it's like when people get angry that like the dragons in skyrim they're not real dragons because they don't have four limbs they are real dragons because in that world that's what a dragon is exactly like, yeah they're I, not a D dragon because right. they're not designed to be a D dragon in this, yeah it's, it's not D, &D you know it's not D, &D so it's not yeah. gonna necessarily be that and it's the same thing with this argument like they're not necessarily going to be naked, and they're not necessarily going to be green. Yeah. Stop being stupid, <laughs> you know. Like, but people are legitimately upset that you know there aren't green titties flopping about when they're in the Brooklyn Forest. There's plenty of titties. There's plenty of titties. Show. Yeah, I've like always like, for more titties. Don't get me wrong, but they don't have to be completely naked. And it they, they <sighs> didn't seem like they were. They weren't like dryads in a sense of like they were a. a um, mythological creature, a fan fantastical creature. Anyway, they were just people that went and lived in the forest and like stayed there. Yeah, they were am they, they were basically Amazons, I think. Like like they yeah, would like yeah. No, to they, me, I I didn't even remember them being called dryads. I was just like, oh, oh. They, yeah. they called them dryads, and then I was like, oh, they're basically fucking uh, Amazonians or yeah. um, fuck, I can't can't think of the it, like yeah, they're, they're jungle people. Yeah. But in, in this case, they're like uh, all women, which was it? Is it the Amazons? Yeah. The Amazonians. Yeah. The Amazonians. All women warriors. Yeah, the Amazonians yeah. are an all woman warrior tribe, like uh, from um, Wonder Woman's race. Like, whatever. Yeah. yeah whatever she ends up I was with, trying I to think of. Right now. I thought there was another Greek legend or something, but I think I might be thinking of the island of horses. Valkyries. Valkyries Valk are all female. Well, yeah, that would be Greek. I'm Roman. Um, there's an island of, I think, uh, they're women by day and they turn into horses at night or something. And then they eat the men or kill them, any men around the island. I don't remember. Fucking Greek and Roman uh, stories are insane. Either I mean, way, yeah. That's were, pretty metal, fucking... though. So I gotta, I gotta say, that's pretty metal. Exactly. But they were, they were fucking like Amazon. The Amazonians, they're, they're fucking badass uh, warrior women that are like, that to me, they were more druids than fucking dryads, but whatever. They're the dryads. Cool. <laughs> it they works. Drink, it's fine. They, they get high off of drinking the sap from this really fucked up tree. <laughs> that was all I needed. And they will beat your ass with spears and whatever else they've got. They'll fucking come into our forest. Yes. Um, but yeah, like, but like, a thing that I haven't seen uh, is everybody, mm -hmm. anybody really complaining about Fringilla not being as white as snow. Um, because she's literally described in the book as being pale as dicks, basically. So, like, yeah. you're, you're complaining that Triss isn't a sexy redhead. You're complaining that the dryads aren't naked green chicks. But you're not complaining that Fringilla is black. Okay. I mean, I guess part of... Well, I know there were some people complaining about that. Um, that was the, like, I, cause I, I've seen, and it's coming from those darker places, of the internet, but they were calling this show like the SJW Witcher, uh, because they changed certain characters, um, 
I mean, it, having a bunch of characters being black in the first place apparently was a problem for them. Yeah. Um, I to me, the way they've set this world up makes a lot more sense than when like people were pissed off that there weren't more black people in the game. Yeah. Uh, or a- any racial people in the game. Whereas the game story is based completely on a fucking Polish fairy tale. That's that's all it was. Yeah. There was it, it wasn't a we're we're rejecting that these people are here. They literally wouldn't have been there. It is just taking place in like twelfth century Poland. Yeah. They hadn't even uh, or or maybe even fucking tenth century Poland. We were talking like way back there there haven't been people traveling to across the world they wouldn't know what a black person was basically yeah. in the show they seem like they acknowledge that there that was one of the problems that the one dude had when he got Frangilla before Yennefer came in and did her glow up thing was that she she wasn't from his country yeah. i took that to i i assumed oh he's a racist bastard because just looking at her, he can tell he wasn't. She wasn't from his country. Yeah. So I, I don't. I, I don't. Obviously, I don't have a problem with them doing that either. No, I. I Same thing yeah. with fucking Heimdall is black. Well, fine. Who gives a shit? Yeah, I. I seriously, I don't care about it. It's just one of those things I found interesting that when you look at trolling commentary on in this nature, it's usually stuff about racism. You know, it's usually racism. Yeah, and because- I did. I saw some of that, but it wasn't the like main Twitter commentary stuff. And I think a big part of that is like you said, most of those people haven't read the books and have no concept that if that uh, gets out and someone starts, one of the fucking people with an anime uh, character uh, (laughs) profile pic starts complaining about it. Then I bet they're all going to get behind it and start bitching about the show like that. But at this point, I think they just fucking don't know. (laughs) Yeah. It was just dumb. Like, it's just one of those things I find stupid. Like you're complaining about titties, you're complaining about this, but it's like, <clears throat> but this is one of those things that I 100% see you complaining about just because of your your history with complaining about stuff like this. Like, why aren't you yeah. complaining about that? Like, that's one of those yeah. things that's so don't, obvious. Shh, quiet, Joe. They don't know yet. <laughs> they don't know. <laughs> I don't I'm know. Just, it's just it's just dumb, and I, I. Oh yeah. But the show is is fantastic. Uh, if you're gonna watch it, the show, and the only exposure it, it, you have is is the video games, don't go in expecting the video games. It's still great. Yeah, yeah, like I still think it's amazing. So I mean, me obviously, I'm not. I, I you know hedged my expectations because I knew it wasn't exactly the video games. Uh, but I mean, the moment in the first fight where he uses the ard. Yeah. Um, not spell, but whatever they call it. Wish I was like, sign. I'm in. Yeah, his sign uses Erd and knocks a bunch of those guys back and like stuns them for a half a second. I was like, oh yeah, no, this is it. This is I'm in. Hundred percent. Fucking, he's taking the mutagens and stuff in different fights. Like, yeah, he's drinking uh, his potions and shit. Like, yeah, this is yeah, awesome. I was like, nope, this is it. This this has me 100. percent It's it's close enough. Like. Obviously, it's set way, way in the past, so the story's going to be different. But there's characters you recognize, and it's 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 fucking perfect to me. I, I just I I I, I want to say that I absolutely uh, I I love that the very first episode that they do um, details how he got the Butcher of Blavikin title, which is like like you know in the, if you played the games, even if all you played is The Witcher Three, you know that he has a title of the Butcher of Blavikin, but it's like. You, you have no idea this. why. I you have no, no idea, idea why. Like, you just know he killed a bunch of dudes. Like, oh, okay. And then they go, they start this show right away showing you how he got that title. Like, how it happened to him. And it's like, fuck yeah, that's awesome. Because yeah. it's just that little, that, like, for the game players, I think it's a little nod. And then for the book readers, it's like, yeah, no, I knew this. This is great. I want to see this come alive. And it's like, they do such a fantastic job. So... Yes. Well, one thing that if someone is like, oh, I don't know if I'm going to like it. I only played the games. Um, Henry Cavill was 100 percent like fighting for this role. And I mean, he's a ma- major actor. He should not ever have to fight for a role. Yeah. Um, right. He wanted to play Geralt so, so badly 
because he's a huge fan of the games. He's a fan of the books. Well, like, okay. But let's be clear here. Be. Let's be clear here, though. Um, mm-hmm. Because this is something that did come out. Uh, he is a huge fan of the games. When oh, he, he didn't contacted, even read the book. Yeah, when he contacted okay. Um, when he contacted them and was trying to fight for the role and trying to get the role, like, listen, I want to really do this. And he was told it's not based on the games. It's based on the books. He immediately went out, got the books and read them just okay. so he well, knew what he was doing. So, so yeah, so like, like it's just as much dedication. Game. Yeah. It's, it's even more yeah. dedication. So like it only yeah. supports the point you're trying to make, but I had to make sure we were clear on that. Yeah. It definitely, that, that definitely, even more so, like you said, it, it, he was that much of a fan that he's like, no, I, I have to do this. Yeah. Like, this is the guy that played Superman. This is the guy that played the man from Uncle. Yeah. Like, he, he he's had these big, fun roles. It's like, no, listen, I want to do this little, tiny, small time role. Because it's obvious, I mean, it's not a huge role compared to some of the things we've seen him in. And it's like, yeah, that's fucking awesome. He wanted this. It's like, no, I, I have to do this. And he fucking nails it, man. Like, yeah, really I, I think he's way better at this. And I like Henry Cavill as Superman. And I think he was better at this than he was a Superman. I, oh, person. absolutely. Yeah, no, like like 100% much, much better. He he seems like, and I don't know, maybe I'm looking to reading too much into it. He seems to really enjoy being Geralt. He's got the voice fucking down. The I was worried about him because he seems like a more uppy, up and like happy person. Even though obviously Superman was the, the Superman movies that we've gotten so far have been not happy. But I mean, <laughs> I like I was like, oh, is he gonna be able to do it? And then as soon as he starts talking with his fucking gravelly ass voice, I'm like, nope, yeah, he's got it. Yeah, he's, like, yep, like I, I saw an interview. Um, where he was talking about how he arrived, like he chose a voice and he ended up going with a mixture of um, his own accent and like the gravelly voice type stuff. And so I'm like, he nailed it. Like he, he doesn't sound like Doug Cockle, but he's like, no, I based it, I based it on a combination of, of Doug and mine. It's like, it fucking yeah. works so well. Like yeah, he, like the episode episode four where he's talking to the queen and he's in the little thing and you know he's just he's just like that's that's some of the most dialogue you get because he doesn't have a whole lot of dialogue because Geralt's just not a a talkative individual. Um, no. it's just it's just fantastic. Like I love it, and like it yeah. really shows off his ability to act. This is like the year of shows with, or with the between him and the Mandalorian where it shows how well. You can have these people acting, um, without even saying without, anything. Yeah, without them having to say a lot and like do a huge amount of stuff. Uh, but I mean, the sword fighting though, like, oh my god, the sword, the choreography in this oh show is fucking gorgeous. I remember uh, I was reading up on it. Apparently, um, uh, Henry Cavill brought in a team from a movie he had done. I don't remember what movie it now is where to do the, the fight choreography. And it's like, it's worked out so well. The sword fighting is so heavy and visceral and just, it feels so much realer than Mm -hmm. any sword fighting you would have, you would have gotten from game of Thrones. You know, it's just like, Oh, Um, they're, they're pretty pathetic with the fight choreography in game of Thrones. Uh, where they're going for like a single moments type thing instead of, yeah, um, like actual <laughs> sword techniques, and that's one thing you get in the games where uh, they're legit real um, ancient sword techniques that Geralt uses in all the characters. The armor's authentic, the sword techniques are authentic, and then that comes over into the show too, yeah. where it's authentic. It's it, and it looks amazing. Um, you don't have to like make things look over the top and fake to make it awesome. It can be realistic and be cool. That fight, uh, the later one of the later episodes where they go and they're protecting this dragon egg, and him and Yennefer, I one I didn't expect Yennefer to get into a sword fight at all, and then she fucking pulls out a sword and a goddamn dagger and starts going to town on those motherfuckers, mm-hmm. and both her and Geralt are like fighting back to back. Holy fuck, man. That fight was amazing. 
you know, like when I sit there and I think like we talk about Game of Thrones and I think about fight choreography and stuff, like at this point, like some of it was really good. A lot of it yeah. was just mediocre or just okay. But like the only real fight choreography that jumps out at all are the uh, the three little sand snake chicks who were just so bad. Oh god, that was awful. There like, was and thinking back, there was good fight choreography some at some points, but then you get to those later seasons and yeah, you have the the snake chicks where god damn God bless him, it was terrible. <laughs> oh my, it's like one of the worst things I have ever seen. <laughs> like, I, I <laughs> that's all I can think of. Like, I'm thinking of the fight choreography. Like, yeah, what are some good moments to compare it to? And Jon Snow had some good moments, you know, and, and Sean Bean had some good moments. And, of course, Nikolai Walder Custo had some good moments. But it's yeah. like, you sit there and you think, like, what are what are, like, the best moments in that show? And it's like... The only thing that comes to mind is the fucking Sand Snakes fight choreography, which was so awful. And it's like, come on, I can I can yeah. choose something better, right? It's like, no, that's all that all that comes to mind because of just how terrible it was. You know, like I I don't know, man. I'm i I'm just hilariously bad. <laughs> yes, yeah. Um and I sit there and I just look at Henry Cavill and, and you know how he just gets so into the fighting, like the the scene where he in, in the fourth episode again where he's fighting all the guards off. I I love how they they jump the focus around and it's not just on him; it's also on Dooney who's doing pretty well. It's oh, also on yeah the 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 king who's of Skellige whose name doesn't fucking come to mind right now. It's also on. Um, or not the king of Skellige, but the the the, the, the king that the, the dude that, from Skellige. the king the, the king that uh, Queen Catalanth uh, sits there and marries, whose name I can't yeah. remember right now, and like how they're all just going at it, and the queen jumps into the fray, and it's just like it's just so awesome, and everything's so well well uh, choreographed. It's like yeah, that's great. I don't know, like there's just it there's was, just. It, there, when they do fight scenes in it, it's awesome. Even when they do the monster fights, which could go bad so easily. Yeah. Um, that the uh, fucking what was the 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 kid, the, the, not the kid, but the the uh, et, not Etchen, the Striga, the Striga. Yes, that was legitimately ter- terrifying. Yeah, that thing yeah. is fucking nightmarish. That thing was horrifying. Uh, like the CGI in this in this ranges from kind of eh to really really good. That one was somewhere in the middle of those two. Um, well, they went back and forth from CGI when it was practical too. Yeah, it was lo- fucking terrifying. They yeah. really did awesome with those effects, both the practical and the CGI. And I mean, he goes full stop. He's using like his, the different signs and stuff in the fight. Um. He fucking busts the floor below them, collapses. Ah, it was just, man, that was fucking cool. Well, I mean, that like, was. And he sits there, he's got that silver chain. He sits there and wraps it around her. She's like, ah! Oh, fuck that beginning. Like, you see he her. walks out with that chain. You see her skin burning, and then she just busts it open. He's like, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> that, that is the quote from Geralt, by the way, from the whole series, is just, Fuck. <laughs> yeah, like he, he says two things, hmm, and fuck. fuck. <laughs> it's like yes, this is amazing. And, he does, and he's got way more character depth than he does with playing Superman. <laughs> he does like that. That's the thing that kills him. Like Superman is this An complex, emotionless mutant. Is way more complex and emotional. <laughs> It's like you sit there and you look at Superman's history and you see that he has so much personality and so much depth and so much stuff in him. And then, like, you look at the movies, and this isn't Cavill's fault at all. Like, he, he no, didn't it, do it's, this. It's the writing. It's, it's where the writing. Yeah, the writing is just such trash, you know? Let's make like, Superman dark and edgy and, and fucking. Why? But, just why? And that's like, that's, that's a terrible idea because Superman is neither dark nor edgy. He's upbeat. He's positive. He's hopeful. Right. Primary colors. Yeah. Like, all right. Um, I'm done. Go watch the Witcher on Netflix. It's amazing. Yeah. You know, just go see it. Like go sit there, binge it in a day, cry yourself to sleep and then binge it another day. It'll be fine. Um, 
Like we have yeah. so long to wait for the next the next season. It's like twenty twenty one. I was so man. happy to hear that uh, the the fucking they were basically filming uh, Mandalorian almost back to back, so that right. it's coming out later this year. I think summer is when we get season two of the Mandalorian because I knew that we were gonna have to wait so long for The Witcher. <laughs> you know what though? Like like in my honest opinion, it's been worth it, and I think it will be worth it. Um, oh, one hundred percent. Yeah, yeah. Like, I, like I it's. I, I'm. I mind the wait now, but at the same time, it's not necessarily a bad thing. Yeah, like you know, it's like uh, I. I think Shigeru Miyamoto's philosophy on like bad games can be yeah. applied to TV shows and movies as well. You know, like like a, yeah, a delayed sure. game can be good, but a bad game is bad forever. So it's like. Yeah. Yeah, uh, I, I'm 100% on board with that. So I'll, I'll wait a year if it means I get a second season of this show that is as amazing as the first. So. Yeah, and I said it before, and I'll say it again. I really hope they decide on a definitive ending um, and don't stretch it out. Right, Because right, yeah. it, it's, it should tell its story and then be done. Yeah, It doesn't like, need like, to continue. It could, but it shouldn't. It shouldn't. I, I absolutely Netflix, agree. It shouldn't. Netflix, they have a good track record of not doing that. Uh, also, they didn't stretch it out to where they had two or three, like really either mediocre to bad episodes. Uh, like the, with the Marvel properties, they, they their seasons were like one or two episodes too long. This didn't feel like that at all. No, no, like because even I mean, they 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 worked. Um, each each episode told one of the short stories, and it was like perfect. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. It was like 100%. Like, yep, that is exactly what you should do. You did it, and you fucking pulled it off 100%. Yeah. And I I completely have faith uh, with this season. I have faith in, in Lauren that she can do it and, and that they'll be fine. So, yeah. Go watch it. So yep. I think I think that's it for us. Uh, we're going to wind this episode down. I'm hungry, and I have to take a shit, and Luke has things to do. So... <laughs> That's it, guys. We hope you enjoyed that. Uh, you know, yeah. snooze is stupid. Pigeons with cowboy hats and a guy putting opium in his noodles. <laughs> it's great. And then, of course, we talked about The Witcher because, of course, we're going to. You know we are. We've sucked CD Projekt Red's dick. We've sucked The Witcher's dick. Like, we love these games. We love the company. And uh, yeah. so, obviously, anything that comes out that we can consume easily like that, we're going to. And we're going to talk about it. So, uh, you know, Go like us, like, share, subscribe on YouTube, leave a comment, tell us how much we suck, uh, and uh, share us with your friends, of course. Um, subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. It helps us out. Um, you know, If you are feeling particularly involved, you can join our Discord, help us shape the show, because we, we don't, we have no direction we're going in. And, um, you know, give us a buck on Patreon, man. You always use a little more yeah. money. And uh but that's it, you know, for the ungodly geeks. I was Joe. Uh, I was Luke. You guys have a good day. See ya. Fuck yeah.